You know, it went from being like a little weird and unusual to incredibly impressive. Good morning from the car rental place in Osaka. So for the last two weeks, we have been hanging out with our friends in Tokyo, which we did not film at all, admittedly, because quite honestly, guys, it's a little oversaturated in the YouTube market. But here's a quick snippet of what we did. Now we're headed to our final leg of our Japanese journey and the final video that we'll be making here, which is to Shikoku. Why are we going to Shikoku? We're going to the abandoned doll village. We are also going to be eating from a Japanese convenience store for 24 hours because we have found that it's A, the best food. Well, that's a lie. A, the cheapest food and most convenient. And B, we've been kind of doing it anyway to, I don't know, save money. And also they have some really good food options. So we're gonna give you guys a little tour of what we usually eat in a day, except today we're gonna be doing it all day long. Can you take a guess on whose idea this was? It's delicious. <laughs> Nerve-wracking start to the day, but we found a parking spot and a 7-Eleven is right over there, so we're gonna run in and grab our breakfast. Now, 7-Eleven is arguably our favorite and, in our opinion, the best of the three. The three main ones are Family Mart, 7-Eleven, and Lawson's. Now, the reason that this is our favorite is because it seems to have the best and widest selection of goods, as well as normally has the most amount of stuff in stock. So we're starting off with breakfast. Let's go see what they have. And I always like to take off our day with coffee, but the bad thing about getting coffee anywhere in Asia we found is that there's so much added sugar, which is just not our thing. However, there is one good kind of coffee. I really hope they have it. That's what we typically get. This one has no added sugar. It's just a basic latte and it's what we try to get every day. It's roughly 138 yen, but it can go up to about 160 yen if they warm it up for you, but these are cold. Speaking of, they also offer warmed up goods or they will warm things up for you in a microwave. So if you're in the mood for warm coffee, you can just come over here to where things look a little more red and pick up your own warmed coffee. Otsutaka. Otsutakai, which must mean hot. So I typically try to kick off the day with something savory and also somewhat healthy. I have no idea what Jeff's going to do, but I'm going to stick with onigiri. The best one by far is the tuna mayo. Where are we? the wrong shelf. <laughs> Uh -oh. They don't have it. Disaster. We just talked up how much they, like, they always have a selection, but they don't have it. It's because everyone knows they have a selection. <laughs> That's true. So because they are out of unigiri, um, well, the kind that we like anyway, I will typically go for an egg sandwich, which they're also out of. So this is a very popular 7-Eleven. However, they do have the mix pack. This is like egg and ham, sometimes tuna. It's definitely not what I want for breakfast, but it'll do. Obviously convenience stores aren't the most healthy meal so we do try to supplement it with something that does have some sort of vitamin and fiber and for Brie that's always fresh fruit. So we're gonna grab some fresh fruit here which in my opinion is some of the best fresh fruit I've actually ever had and I'm surprised you can get it at this quality level from a convenience store. Mandarin oranges I think today. I'm gonna join the train. Okay, so 7-Eleven has let us down, but we still were able to get a couple items. Um, hopefully Lawson's or Family Mart can help us get it together because we really miss our unigiri. First up, so we're really bummed that they didn't have the egg salad sandwich, which I don't know what Japan does differently, but their egg sandwiches are fantastic. Chef's Kiss, if you come here, you absolutely have to try them. I know you're going to get caught up in trying to go to a fancy omakase or, uh, you know, a ryokin for a kaiseki or something like that, but you have to try their convenience store food. I cannot say that enough. Not only is it a fantastic way to save money if you're traveling on a budget, but the food is also fantastic. So even though we couldn't get a pure egg salad sandwich, we do have egg salad mixed here with some lettuce and... I think it's ham. Ham, cucumber, egg, and mayonnaise. So... <laughs> 
It'll do. It'll do. And by the way, that was, what was it, like 15 bucks? So we supplement one meal a day with 7-Eleven or some other convenience store specifically to save money. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six items today. So it's a win. It's a win. decided to stop and stretch our legs and get a nice view and we found this cute little convenience store so technically this is not from the big three but we decided to try a sweet potato because we've seen it everywhere across Japan. Okay ready? This was 380 yen and again I've seen them all across Japan just never got one but who doesn't like sweet potatoes? Just kidding Jeff doesn't. <laughs> I do like sweet potatoes. That very much just looks like a hot sweet potato. Is that what it is? Any seasoning, or is it just... It's just a sweet potato, but it's amazing. Really? Yeah. Looks but like... But it's a plain sweet mushy. potato. Can I try what? Well. <laughs> That's a sweet potato. We have about an hour left in our drive before we get to our final destination. It's pretty strange driving here on the island of Shikoku after being in places like Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo, even up north in Hokkaido, because there's no one, but... Of course, that's the reason for our purpose today to the doll village, which is what I think I called it earlier, but we later found out that it's actually called the Scarecrow Village. And just in case anybody out there doesn't know what this is, basically everyone left this small little town on the island of Shikoku, and there was one lady left who decided that she was very tired of it, so she made a bunch of scarecrows. So there's an entire town comprised of these scarecrows that are filled with like newspaper and hay, and they just sit around and it's really creepy, so... We're gonna go check it out. So as of right now, the scarecrows outnumber the people that live there about 10 to one. So there are about 30 residents remaining. Now she made a scarecrow for everyone that's left the village at this point. She's even started making some more pop culture scarecrows. So like there's one for Donald Trump, Waldo as in where's Waldo, um, some Japanese pop singers. Um, so she just keeps making them and making them and there's a ton of them now. By the way, I just realized we didn't address Jeff's hair. Um, yes, he has dyed it yellow. It was supposed to be white. I think what he wanted to do got lost in translation a little bit, so say hello to the new Jeff. Or should I say the anime Jeff? I think the biggest issue was that I have really black hair, at least the hair that's not already turned to gray, and we just didn't have the time after three and a half hours, the guy was like, you gotta get out of my shop. <laughs> We just spotted our first couple scarecrows and it was terrifying because <laughs> we're about 10 minutes out from the village but I think we're gonna start seeing them slowly just along the route there um, but we're almost there and it's probably gonna be really creepy. We have arrived. It's a little chilly and it's creepy. So admittedly we've already seen a couple tourists which is very surprising considering this is in the middle of nowhere. Really, Brie was the driving force behind coming here. She really loves this kind of stuff. And I was skeptical, but I'm actually surprised how much I'm enjoying it. It is insane to see the detail on these scarecrows and realize that one lady single-handedly repopulated this village. It's nuts. I'm 99% sure we're walking across this bridge to go to the school. So supposedly she filled the auditorium with what, like 50, 100 students? to try and recreate what it was like here when the school was full of life and children actually still inhabited this village. These guys behind me are like the parking people, I guess, for the school. And I'm not gonna lie, when we pulled in, I thought they were actual real people. Oh my God. You gotta turn this <laughs> I am scared. Wow. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe this. Isn't it funny that even in a doll village you can't wear 
sneakers inside. Etiquette is etiquette. You know, it went from being like a little weird and unusual to incredibly impressive. This takes a lot of work. That's James May. James May was here. Wow, oh my god. I don't know what I would have done in her situation if everyone that I knew and had known for my entire life just up and left. I probably would have gone too. I probably would have moved to a place like Tokyo, but it's really kind of cool to see how she just embraced it almost and made it her own thing and has now put her village back on the map kind of. I mean, I wouldn't say there's a ton of people, but there was a tour bus here and we did see two other cars pull up. So people are actually coming to visit this place and maybe it's a great way for her to remember this place always and to leave it in the minds of other people, even though it seems that her own people forgot it. Jeff's getting very philosophical, but the one thing I can think of is this would probably be the best place in the world to play hide and seek with your friends. Mission accomplished. We ticked something off of Bree's bucket list and surprised how much I enjoyed it. I think mostly because it's a very unique experience. And I think it's something that almost every country is dealing with. You know, the migration of people from the rural areas to the more urban centers where there are jobs, opportunities, education, etc. I wish my Japanese was better, i.e. exist in, in any capacity whatsoever, because we did see a local, one of the 30 that still live here, out there gardening. So all we could really do is say hello, she smiled and waved at us. Um, and I just, you know, to be able to keep going on as if nothing really changed and garden, <laughs> it just, it almost added to the absurdity of it all. No one's here, but she's still taking care of her garden you know maybe for these 300 dolls that now exist here just uh a lot of time for introspection very cool i thought it was really creepy and impressive and i liked it i think you should come see it if you're ever in the area which why would you be so, <laughs> <laughs> so just make the time if you're interested in it but we are starving it's time for our second meal of the day we're heading to lawson's We just stopped at Lawson's, which is number two of the big three. And maybe for me, least favorite. I think Family Chick, sorry, Family Mart might be number two, specifically for their fried chicken called Family Chicky. Definitely go get one if you're a fried chicken lover. It is fantastically delicious. This isn't a Family Chicky, but it is Lawson's version, and I'm sure it'll be just as good, or at least for me, not a noticeable difference considering I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> Another quick fun fact about Lawson. So we had to print our tickets. We went to Tokyo Disney Sea, and you have to bring a paper copy of your tickets. So we actually put them on a USB stick and we were able to bring them in and plug that in and print them off of a Lawson's printer. 
Now, all of the convenience stores do have printer slash copy machines. However, Lawson's is the only one that maintains full functionality when you switch to English. If you go into a 7-Eleven or a Family Mart and you switch it to English, you actually lose a lot of functionality and it becomes a glorified copier. Cheers. Bon appétit. Ohio Gozaimasu from the parking lot of our one-star hotel here on Shikoku, which was really not bad. Um, you may be asking yourself a couple questions at this moment. Number one, are we wearing the same thing we wore yesterday? Yes. Number yes. two, have we hit all of the three major convenience stores here in Japan? No. But we are on our way to Family Mart this morning so we can wrap up our food tour. <laughs> you can call it that. So you just saw what we got in there. We pretty much got the same thing we got yesterday because we're creatures of habit. But one thing we didn't was the Family Mart. But one thing we didn't was the Family Mart pancakes. These come with maple and margarine and they are the closest thing we've gotten to American pancakes as of yet on this trip. They are amazing. If anybody's coming to Japan, I would say try them, but try them at the end of your trip. Otherwise you're gonna start getting them more and more frequently and it is not good for your health, but they are delicious. Yeah, I want to say they're about 500 calories. Is it each? No. Total? It's total. Then there's two in here. And there's two in there. So you can split them with your partner, friend, and or mortal enemy if you want to repair that Make bridge. Make amends. Yeah. <laughs> so leaking butter. Yeah. Hmm. Just amazing. No better way to start a day. Definitely other healthier ways, but no better. Man, but they're so good. They're oh my so gosh. Good. We can't get these anymore. I know. This is the last time. I know. The elusive egg sandwich. So this is, in my opinion, probably the most important thing you can get when you're traveling to Japan because I don't know what they do different, but their egg sandwiches are in a league of their own. They're light, they're fluffy, there's no crust. The mayo is just on another level. Highly recommend. We actually eat these far more than we should admit, but it's a great way to save money. They're about 230 something yen and they're really filling. It's just light and fluffy. It's it's just amazing. <laughs> it's the best thing. Best thing you can get from a convenience store, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. For me this morning, tuna unigiri. Definitely the healthiest option, I think, in terms of breakfast from a convenience store. We have had so many of these. I'm so glad we haven't counted because I think I would be disgusted with those. Love these. I'm completely stuffed now, mostly with butter and maple syrup and processed pancake and mayo. stuff. And, and mayonnaise. <laughs> I definitely just ate a lot of mayonnaise. But that's okay because it's the perfect fuel for three and a half hour drive back to Osaka. Where we're gonna return the rental car and have one last night's sleep before we head off to our next destination. If you haven't already, please click that like and subscribe and follow along with us to see where we're going next.